Please pray, pray very hard, because somebody close to you is the cause for your downfall. Please excuse me. So mom, that's what Salome, one of the cleaning staff told me. She just insisted that I should be very prayerful. Then you better heed her advice Matilda. Let's not ignore this warning. But what did she mean when she told you that somebody close to you is the cause for your downfall? Could it be that she suspects some foul play? I don't know mom. I'm just happy that you've come to town to visit me for some days. Everything was just wearing me down. Yes, I'm glad that I came over, and especially at this time. I don't want to sound superstitious, but could it be that maybe someone is working behind your back to hinder you? There are people out here who use witchcraft and dark powers to control other people's lives. Mom, seriously? There is nothing like witchcraft. Then why is it mentioned over and over again in scripture? If it was non-existent, then there would have been no mention of it in the Bible. God himself loathes the practice of dark arts, and that's why he says that he will cut off such people from the land. I have personally seen people who are under witchcraft manipulation. Such people may not be aware that such a thing has been done to them, but I often see that they don't advance in life. Like nothing works out for them, all of a sudden, despite their efforts. That is, unless they start praying about it, or even seek for deliverance from a Holy Spirit-filled church. Okay, I'm listening. But mom, I still pray. Well that's good, but there is a way you pray to deal with it. Witchcraft manipulation is conducted from an evil altar. You first need to repent of all of your sins, because witchcraft works on you, when you have open doors such as anger, bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart, and there is unrepented sin. Then ask God to arise and fight on your behalf. Thirdly, you need to break down these altars by prayer, and then break the covenants that attach you to such programming. Covenants are agreements that you have made with someone. Witches and warlocks need your agreement, whether knowingly or unknowingly to bewitch you. And that's why it's important to pray over gifts, money or even the food that you consume. So you need to revoke and renounce such agreements and such curses. You then need to silence the voice of the sacrifice that was given on such an altar to work against you. The strength of any altar lies with the sacrifice made on it. We have a greater altar in Christ Jesus because he was the ultimate sacrifice on Calvary. Then you ask God to avenge for you and recover all that has been lost and for God to also deal with the iniquity workers. You need to do these kinds of prayers with fasting. Mom, will you pray with me please? Sure, I will pray with you. But we need to embark on a fast. Why don't we start with a seven-day fast, and we can proceed from there? Heavenly Father, we come before you in agreement and absolute submission. We repent of all of our sins, and we ask you to forgive us for any anger, bitterness and unforgiveness that we harbored in our hearts. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus as we get into these prayers. Amen. According to Colossians 1.13, You Lord have delivered us from the domain of darkness, and transformed us into the kingdom of your beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. Amen. Altar of the Most Sovereign God arise, and scatter every altar of the wicked, speaking against us in Jesus' name. Just as Elijah prayed down fire from heaven on the altar of Baal, we send fire of the Holy Spirit, to destroy and burn to ashes every evil altar speaking against our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, we set ablaze every evil altar that has been programmed against our lives and destinies, whether in the heavenlies, on earth or underneath the earth. We pluck up, we break down, we destroy and overthrow these evil altars in Jesus' name, as we build and plan a godly altar, to speak on our behalf, as written in Jeremiah 1.10. We erase and nullify all curses and hexes that have been released against us, by the blood of Jesus, 
For we decree and declare that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, by becoming a curse for us, according to Galatians 3.13. We renounce and nullify all evil covenants, vows and agreements that we made in the past, which have put us in bondage, in Jesus' name. We flush out any food or drinks that we have taken to seal such evil agreements, by the blood of Jesus. Amen. We silence every evil sacrifice, and blood cry that is from an evil altar, speaking against our lives, by the blood of Jesus, which speaks better things than the blood of Abel, according to Hebrews 12:24, in Jesus' name. We command every witch, warlock or sorcerer, servicing an evil altar against our lives to receive the judgment of God. O God arise, and let thy enemies be scattered in Jesus' name. Amen. We withdraw all our personal effects that have been placed on an evil altar, as a point of contact in the mighty name of Jesus. We withdraw our names, pictures, clothes, hair, nails, shoes, money or any other item in Jesus' name. We take back and restore everything that has been stolen from us, through an evil altar, according to Joel 2.25. We restore all lost time, destiny, opportunities, health, wealth, marriage and glory, in the name of Jesus. We thank you Lord for hearing our plea, and we believe that you have answered this prayer by faith. It's in Jesus' name that we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Don't worry. It shall be well with you my daughter. They fasted for seven days, and did another fast for twenty-one days. The spell I placed on this woman named Matilda, has been broken. I better distance myself from this case. Now my client is in some serious problem. Welcome back to Channel 44 News, I am Matilda Martinez. I mean... I... We shall be back after the commercial break. What just happened? I seriously have no idea. Are you okay? I put your name and photo in a little pot. <laughs> you will never get promoted. <gasps> Please pray, pray very hard, because somebody close to you is the cause of your downfall. What have you just said? Huh? What's going on? Enough of this madness. Matilda, you shall carry on with the news alone. Yes, sir. And you, Layla. Step out of the set immediately. But, sir, I'm now all right. I can still carry on with the news. I said step out right now. I'm not going to argue with you. What exactly happened on set? I seem to have blacked out for a moment. It's like I was in a dream. But do I really remember correctly? Did I actually confess to Matilda that I had bewitched her, in front of everybody else? No, maybe that was in my imagination. Let me just pretend as though nothing happened. Can you just imagine how embarrassed Layla must have been, to confess such a thing in front of everybody else? I couldn't believe it. It was like I was watching some movie. But... In your opinion, Dave, do you think that she has done this to more people at work? By the way, here comes Layla. Ha! I can't stand her. Let me get out of here. Adios. Aye. But where did Dave rush to? I was hoping that I could speak to the both of you. I don't know where he's gone to. Maybe he should be on set in a few minutes. Well... Anyway, I'm planning on hosting a housewarming party at my place, and I would like to invite you and Dave over next Saturday. Will you be available, Jack? I unfortunately will not be able to attend. I have some other commitments. Excuse me. 
But why is everyone suddenly avoiding me? Wise one, I don't understand what is happening to me. Let me make it very clear to you. You attacked someone who is now very prayerful, as opposed to before. Prepare to suffer the consequences. And by the way, you will suffer from the consequences alone. So what are you trying to say? You assured me that it was a done deal. And that I was going to get the promotion over Matilda. You meddled with the wrong one. And clearly, I cannot keep associating myself with you, because I'm now suffering the consequences. Leave my shrine immediately. Layla could no longer stand the stigma from her workplace. So she ended up handing over her resignation, a few weeks later. <clears throat> I must admit that I made an error in my earlier decision, Matilda. Are you still interested in the editor position? Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Mulligan, I am still interested. Then, the job is yours, Matilda. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Congratulations. You deserve it. <laughs>